Hello and welcome to the main course, Dish Up Some Food for Thought. People often think about basic mathematics as a bunch of abstract theoretical calculations with some mysterious and even useless meaning. But throughout the centuries, most of mathematics had been born out of very practical, tangible and even everyday situations. Often the life contained within the mathematics gets lost in the process of handing down the idea and it becomes a lifeless theory. Today we will see that the so-called theory of Pythagoras is very practical in nature. If you already understand the theory, be on the lookout for the bonus, which I think is quite beautiful, at the end. It also often happens that the naming of and credit for discoveries and inventions are linked to a specific person, although other people may have made the same discoveries and even earlier. The theory of Pythagoras is such a case. There are writings as old as 4,000 years, more than a thousand years before Pythagoras was born, that illustrate and prove aspects of the theory from places like Egypt, Mesopotamia, India and China. So what exactly does the theory state? The following. The sum of the squares of the two shorter sides of a right angle triangle equals the square of the hypotenuse or longer side. A right angled triangle or right triangle for short, has a 90 degree angle between the two short sides. In this diagram, the theory therefore states that a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Not too difficult, but the life is starting to drain from the theory already, so let's make it practical. We're standing on a stretch of lawn. You start walking in a straight line in one direction, let's say east or to the right. After 4 meters, you turn left and walk north or up. After 3 meters, you stop. You've just walked along the two short sides of a right triangle and they are 7 meters long combined. Can you see that the hypotenuse now connects your starting and ending point? You could have walked straight from the starting point to the ending point. It is clearly further than the 4 meters you walked east, but since it's a shortcut, it will also definitely not be further than the 7 meters total you walked east and north. Although we don't yet know precisely how far it is, we can be certain that it's somewhere between the length of the longest short side and the total combined distance of the two short sides, somewhere between 4 and 7. Let's now have two people walking at the same speed of 1 meter per second. The one person walks along the short sides again and it takes him 7 seconds to walk the 7 meters. The other person walks along the hypotenuse and reaches the end point after exactly 5 seconds. Therefore, he has walked 5 meters, which does lie between 4 and 7. But how can we calculate this distance, rather than physically walking and measuring it? If we place the distances into the formula of the theory, we see that 4 squared plus 3 squared equals 16 plus 9, which is 25. And 25 is the square of 5, the length of the hypotenuse. Okay, but how do we get to the formula? We can't just randomly try formula until one works. What Pythagoras and the rest realized is that you can perform the calculations if you work with an area rather than a distance. Let's draw a square on the lawn for each side of the triangle and calculate their areas. Each row of the blue square contains 4 blocks of 1 meter by 1 meter, since the length is 4 meters. There are 4 such rows since the width is also 4 meters. This corresponds to the 4 squared of the formula. Thus, there are 16 blocks of 1 square meter, and the area is 16 square meters. In the same way, we can show that the green square's area is 9 square meters, while the red square's area is 25 square meters. And the heart of the theory is that these two smaller squares fit perfectly into the larger square. And now for the beautiful bonus. You often realize in mathematics that one theory is actually a special case of a more extensive theory. The relationship in the theory of Pythagoras does not only hold for squares, but for areas of any shape placed on the sides of the triangle, as long as the scale of those shapes are proportional to the length of the sides. Furthermore, the equation also holds in fewer and in more dimensions, as long as there is a 90 degree turn between the dimensions. And in a future video, we will see that the 90 degree angle is itself also a special case of an even more general theory where the angle can also be changed.